Hey everyone, it's Gavi here and welcome to my craft room. Hi guys! Alright, today we are working with some uh, amazing, beautiful, wonderful products. Um, I have three different brands here that we're going to be checking out. And I first want to say, let's just go, it's Faber-Castell gel crayons. We have Recollections, which is a Michaels brand. And we have Marabou Art crayons. So those are the few products. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the packaging, because that is part of the package, right? <laughs> um, so, okay, I'm going to go one at a time right here. The first one is the Marabou Art Crayons. Now, these come in four packs, or they come individually. So, I happened to buy the four packs just because it seemed to me like a better deal, and I wanted to try, like, an array of colors. I have all of these colors. So, I have... Let's move these out of the way. I have the Blue Ocean set. Let's see. You can see that right there down at the bottom. Blue Ocean. I have the Green Jungle set. And the lovely red set. These are the ones that I happen to buy. There are more. There are actually a total of 26 colors in the line. Most of them are like regular colors. And I think that there's a couple of metallics in there. Like one or two. Not too many, but a couple. Um, okay, as far as the packaging goes. I will open one up and show you. I tried to keep them in here, even though they're open in the back, just to show you like how they come come when you buy them. Here is the individual, um, you know, marker or crayon holder. Now the thing is, these are. Let me just show you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just quick bring out the other two brands because you're gonna see what I mean when I talk about packaging, how similar they are. I'm just picking out one of the watercolor ones and one one of the recollections and one of the favorite castell okay so check that out people <laughs> i can only imagine that they pretty much all went to the same place to get this made so that's just right off the bat what i wanted you to notice um the grip is the same the caps they're like the same length so the only difference with the marabou that i think is one up on everybody else is that uh they have Let's see if we can see where they are. Right here in the back, they have, I, you know, you're not going to see. Oh, here we go. Yep. It says plum and has a number to it. So they're more trying to mimic that, like, artist line quality of an idea where you can look at it. You can order it based on individual color, whereas these ones are, mm, I would say, more, not more kid grade, but uh, more craft grade versus, like, artist grade. And they just have the labels of the brands versus there we go versus any kind of particular color okay so i'm going to put these back so i don't lose where they go and quick continue on okay so as far as permanent storage for these babies there is none you have them in here they've got the nice cap so they're not going to dry out but you've got a whole bunch of them where do you put them in a cup in a drawer whatever you can do whatever you want with them but they don't have a packaging that comes made with them now, as far as the next ones, I'll quick show you. You can have, they all come in this hard case. There's two snaps right here, right here. There's the back. Interestingly, the back is open, like, on part of, in, in parts of it, so I can touch them. And then there's this flippy thing to, like, technically, if you wanted to hang it on something, you could, like a pegboard. But um, they come in a nice case already made. That is the Michael's Recollections watercolor crayons. And then the Faber Castell is virtually the same packaging where you've got the two click um, snaps at the back. You've got the little woohoo doodad hanging part and the open end. So it's the same packaging, just one, just, yeah, different companies, obviously. So that is, so then, so these basically have more of that like built in storage. You can just kind of keep them like this, throw them on a shelf, and you're good to go. So that is the one up in regards to these sets. All right, now as far as pricing and color variation and stuff, I'm going to just do a quick re a quick little summary of them just so you have an idea of the kind of prices you're looking at, 
once we go past that, then we'll get into them. We'll do some swatches of each one. You can kind of see if they act the same way, if they look different, is there a difference in vibrancy, all that kind of stuff. All right, so now the four packs. Now, this is at the time of this video, obviously, so it's relative to change depending on when you watch this. A four pack, it, I looked online, like a quick Google search, they were going from about ten fifty to fourteen dollars online. Now I'm not really factoring in shipping; that's its own thing. Um, so there's there's that. As far as the individual ones, I found them anywhere from about three thirty, an a stick, at like Blick, to uh, five ninety nine a stick at Michaels. Now a place like Blick, you're going to be paying shipping, and Sales are kind of iffy, like if and when and how much, but um, Michael's, so they're, they're six bucks, but a lot of times you're going to have promotions where you're getting free shipping or you're getting um, a coupon off of like 30% off this category. So, you know, you might be able to find them much cheaper than $6. So again, it's being smart about shopping, but these are definitely the most expensive of the three brands. And again, they're trying to, I think, work with the like mixed media artist kind of a crowd not necessarily kids are gonna you know be getting a hold of this and using this whereas you know Faber Castell is catering more to kids than I think anybody else but of course it's for all ages so um as far as the color line they've got again the packs of four they've got all together 26 colors that's including everything the whites the blacks the metallics the regular colors 26 colors um they say they're light fast. Now, I didn't do any kind of testing as to the validity of that. If they fade faster than the other brands, I don't know. And that is all I have to say about these. All right, up next are the pretty Faber Castells. So, found some interesting things out about the Faber Castells. This is the one set that I have. This is not all the sets that they make. Um, they have in this pack 12 cr crayons, gel crayons they go by. Um, they have seven opaque colors and five neons. One of them, when one of the opaques is a silver, so I would consider that like a metallic opaque. And the one downside in this particular set is there's no purples. So in the Marabou there's purples, and in the Recollections there's purple in their main sets, if you will, but not in this one. Now they also have okay. So as far as this pack, I found this for twelve thirty five on Amazon. That was like that was the best deal I found on these. And uh, they also have a neon pack, which is a six pack, so half the set. They have a neon pack and they have a metallic pack. And those are eight dollars each, so not as great of a value, but yet they're they're do fun things. Neon. Now the interesting thing about the neon is I don't know if you can see here, but these are all part of the neon set, and the only other one color they have for the six pack to complete the six pack is a purple. So and that's where you can get purple in there. And also the metallic has a purple. But like if you get this set, I don't think you need to get the six piece neon set. Whereas if you're buying the metallic set, none of the metallics are in this main set. So you'd be at if you bought this and then added two metallic, the only thing you'd I think, if I'm not mistaken, would be the purple neon. But everything else would be pretty much in here. And they have the basic red, yellow, orange, green, blue, the whole rainbow thing going on. So um there's no white that I saw either so that may or may not be an issue for you um, although whites in general of this kind of crayon based formula formulation won't necessarily do so much to it I don't know how great of a highlighter it is it's more of like a blender kind of a feature but we'll look at that all right so um, that is that all right as far as our recollection set um, it says Canada $25. That's kind of funny. I don't remember how much exactly I got these for. I think it was probably like a $20 set and I got it half price or maybe it's a little cheaper and I got 40% off, something to that effect. But I couldn't, uh, oh wait, mm, online I think, yes, at Michael's it's like $15 online. So the general standard set of them. So you can get them for a good price. This is also a 12 piece set. And again, Recollections is a Michael's store brand so you're only going to find this in michael's that's just the first thing um you may be able to find an ebay by like secondhand sellers but that's already a whole different ball game and i can't give you pricing on that obviously um okay they have these 12 main colors uh they have 
all of the rainbow colors plus they've got two blues they've got a, a turquoise a pretty green and they've got a pink so um then there's gold silver white so there's no black right here but um like i don't i don't necessarily need black i'm happy with like the variety here and my favorite color is purple so yay they added a purple one in there so that is great um now seasonally they switch them out for i'm um, not switching them out they always carry that one but then they also have in addition these like sampler packs they have stands in michael's where they have different like themes every few months they switch them out for like a new theme whatever's the new either it's like unicorns or it's cooking or it's tropical or spring or easter whatever all different stuff like that so so far i've found these two other packs that have come out i don't know if they're going to continue making more these were again seasonal so it's really like kind of keeping an eye out for them as they come along when they come along um the cool thing is they're scented so that was a lot of fun. Um, they have these pretty tropical-y colors. I wouldn't say that they're like the colors that are on here. Um, the pink, the pink that some of these, now let me see this. This is the interesting thing about these two. Some of these are metallic and I don't know if they all are or not. We'll look at it when we swatch it out more closely. So here they look really these look like they have more of a sparkle and these look really matte they, they there's no sparkle in them at all so even if there's some colors sort of similar like the yellow and the yellow i think this is a shimmer yellow and this is a matte yellow so that just adds variety too and then as far as this set this was the spring dream came out sort of like easter time last year must be They've got the white, which might be the same, and then they've got pink and purple and blue and green. You know, a lot of these might be similar. I did notice that the orange in here is totally different than the orange in there. So you may end up rebuying some of the colors in here, but let me see. The blue shows that it's different. Like if you look in the back, the colors all kind of check out as different. So uh, you're going to get a slight maybe off tone. These are more like the pastel colors. Um... When it comes down to it, how different they really look on paper, what you know, we'll see. But uh, I'm just my thought is I love these these in general, and they they go for a great price. These sets, gosh, I don't know how much they are. I tried to look up online. Um, they were definitely cheaper than the big one, so you know I was probably getting these somewhere between five and like eight dollars a set. I'm gonna assume as far as I can remember, with a coupon or on sale. Because they these kind of sets always go on sale at some point. So you can take the chance and wait till they go on sale, or you can buy them at full price, use a coupon, whatever you want. So there's a lot of colors in here too. Again, this just doesn't have black. I don't see any black in these lines. So that's the one color kind of missing from these. Um, and that is about it for those. All right, so I am here with my crayons in a little container because I don't have a container that they were bought in, right? So, and also when I, even in the four pack, when I ripped open the pack, they were individually wrapped, which isn't a bad thing. That's great. Except, you know, just that idea of having to open them up each one by itself. So I just twisted it, pulled it off. And I mean, it really doesn't take long in this way. They're guaranteed to be the caps on good condition not crushed or anything crazy like that although they are pretty sturdy either way but the other ones come in those hard cases so they're not getting damaged that way and anyway, so that's just something to keep in mind so, all right so now what i'm gonna do with each brand because the idea here isn't necessarily to show you all the ways that you can use these i mean there's a lot of ways you can use these but i basically just want to kind of give an idea of like are the colors the same in the different sets? Uh, is the pigment load much higher in one brand than the other? You know, just what's the quality of them and what kind of, you know, color variation. So we're going to play around a little. This is the, this is just a basic white cardstock from like Michael's. I guess it's probably like 60 pound and it's, I uh, brushed gesso on so it's probably not like perfectly even the gesso but it's as good as even as I could get it I've done that for all the papers of all the crayons the reason I put gesso is to help um, create a paper that's not as absorbent so if I were to example draw a line on here 
and try to rub it out on just a regular piece of paper, you're kind of gonna, you may be able to get some rub, uh, some color spreading, but it's gonna still see, there's gonna be a line that's very apparent in there. It's gonna be really hard to blend out into some kind of smooth surface kind of a look. Um, the packaging actually shows it pretty well on here. If you can see, there's, you know, it's water reactive. Some of the water spills over, but like there's crayon still on top of that. Now, I don't know if that's what they were trying to do here, but that's what I'm saying where you, you'll still see streaks. So that being said, I put the gesso on and that helps it move around better so we can get like a nice feel on how creamy it is and how blendable it is and maybe I'll spray it at the end and see if it drips or not and that was the intention behind using gesso uh, for the different stuff. So I'm just going to start going at it and we'll we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> I'm going to first smear it with my, I'm going to do a bit of a, and these are really creamy just at this first feel. Um, pretty red color. And even as I blend it out here, you can see I'm just going to keep half unblended and half blended. Now, I'm sure you can tell right away that is almost like a totally different color that's got like such a mm, pretty cherry red and that's like a much deeper red. So you can kind of, you can kind of see right from there that you can vary these colors slightly depending on how much blending and if you add white or black you could probably blend together so that is the first thing first hey guys so i apologize <laughs> i thought i had paused it and played on my video and that i had recorded all me swatching all the colors of course afterward i looked and i saw that i missed that totally so what i'm gonna do is there we go zoom out a little um just kind of show you up close i just did these swatches and this was what came out now i'm pretty much seeing on every color except the yellow you can see like a slight shift in the uh it, it's a little lighter when you swatch it with your when you smear it with your finger but the yellow seemed to be fairly the same uh it just looks more blended in so you can kind of really scribble with it or it or you can give it a nice blended look um, with your finger with a brush if you do use water on it you're going to dilute it a little bit and so that is the marabou art crayons all right i got the faber castell gel crayons um and i'm ready to swatch also on white gessoed paper so i'm going to quick uh speed through me swatching all these out All right, so I did the swatching out of these. Now, again, there was some mixing of different types of gel crayons in here that I wanted to just remind everybody of. These were typical opaque ones. Um, and they got a little lighter, but I mean, they pretty much did the same, just blended out. I almost feel like, yeah, they're, they're they just, sorry. <laughs> okay now the one you can't see is the silver you can see kind of when I go like this you can see a shimmer when it's blended out it's almost like a really nice pearl white that if you say wanted to do something and then put this over it that wasn't so the thing you'd have to be like say stamping with archival ink which doesn't move and is not going to react to water and you put this on top you may get a really nice shimmer out of it and the black is uh, pretty black right here but as far as I don't know if my uh, camera is picking it up well or not, but this is more of like a, like an ashy black, I would say more carbon black, not super deep black, but still black. Um, these are the neons then, and they are really light. I almost feel like when you blend them out, you're just getting a really like light shimmer effect. 
um, at least on the gesso, maybe on regular paper, what we can try later and we'll see how they work. But um, when you actually write with them, I feel like if you wanted to use them for like highlighting purposes, they'd be like nice to draw with versus blending out as much. I feel like they lose some of their luminescence when you blend them. But that's just my own opinion. Um, you can still see them either way and they show up nicely. So uh, that is the Faber Castell Grands. All right, next up are my recollections. I'm going to first do the 12 set and then I'm going to do both the six piece sets. So this will be a little bit longer, but I will fast forward through it. So bear with me and we'll see, we'll take a look at these. Here's our swatch and um, beautiful colors, beautiful colors. I'm trying to see here. Now, definitely shimmer happens in the red pinks. All these, this whole line of the first 12 are all shimmery. So just to see, just to see what I'm talking about, this one, all shimmer. Um, now, as far as the next line, that's the tropical set, is all not shimmery. They're all matte. So e even if you got sort of the same colors, they don't come out looking the same. This is sort of close, but yeah, it's, it's, they're just not. They're just not because they're they're matte versus shimmery, so you can't really compare. Now these ones are also all shimmery of the last set, the uh, spring dream, also shimmery. And even the white has like that pearl, um, just like, let's see, the Faber-Castell had a white that was sort of similar. Let me just bring it back. It was a silver. So actually the truth is, is that the Recollections is whiter and this is definitely much more silver. They both come out with like a pretty shimmer though, but that's just for you to know. Um, and so shimmer, matte, shimmer, beautiful colors really neat colors like this is such a unique color I don't know like <laughs> I haven't seen anything like that before this is a really pretty peach peachy pink um I just love the selection I really felt also and this is just my opinion so like don't take this as you know but I felt like these went on with like such a richness um they just had I felt like the pigment low was stronger. I could be making it up, but that's when I use them. When I use all of these, <coughs> excuse me, when I use all the different brands, I noticed that they all have a very gooey, a very like smushy kind of, you know, like if you use a lot, it's gonna, it's gonna leave little pieces and stuff like that. That was with, that was across all brands. It must just be the kind of formulation they use on these. Um, so they all are creamy, but for some reason these feel like they laid down better and and they're like the cheapest of all of them. So um, that was just something I wanted to put out there. Now I wanted to quick show you too. I have the sticks and I want to twist them all up just to see, even though they're in the same packaging, I'm just really curious if they've got the same length on them. You know, that's always another factor. So let me just quick take out one of each. 
doobity doo. This is up all the way. Let me pop that down. <clears throat> Hope I don't break anything here. They're definitely the same thickness. Again, it's the same packaging, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just making sure that I'm not losing it. Yeah, they're the same. This is definitely going to be the same. And then to bring in the favorite castell give me a second. All right. Paper Castell, here we come. Interesting, the neon is so interesting. It really is like, oh, it's super translucent. Okay, we're popping it, popping it all the way up. You can actually see into that one more, and this also. So, like little lightsabers, they all have got the same length going on. So, really, really the same packaging. Same everything. Nobody's jipping us on the amount that's inside. Um, okay, that's that. I know the video is getting nice and long, but I feel like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a thorough job of it. So next up, I want to do the colors on black. Because we have metallics, we have matte, we have neons, I just want to see what shows up and what doesn't. And since different colors are, uh, say, maybe have like a, I don't know if it's a different pigment load, but it's uh, like purple. They're known not to be as strong of a color as, say, a red. So I'm going to just you be using all the colors, not necessarily in order. And I'm going to do some scribbling and some smearing, and it uh, will be quick. And so just to get an idea of which ones show up, if any, show up on the black. Uh, my guess is going to be that the metallics show up the nicest, and the neons are probably not going to show up. But we will see. All right, here I go with the Faber-Castells first. I'll do some smearing at the end, just so we can get an idea. Wow, I'm actually surprised that they're showing up, but they are. They totally are. Oh, they feel so good to color with. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention, too, was that I used my finger and, like, a wet wipe and just wiped it off when I was smearing it with my finger between each color, just so... Um, there would be no, obviously, cross-contamination of color. Here's black on black. I don't know. Yeah, you're not really going to see much of anything. Pretty much not. But that was to be expected. Now, here is the neons. Let's see. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. It's actually come out like an orange color looking. Odd, odd, odd. Yeah, see, they're not really coming out as something that you necessarily want to use on a black and that's fine because highlight is meant to be more used on uh used on a light surface to highlight back to you so uh that's that now i'm just gonna do a little okay interesting now as far as smearing color it's like really not even working this is not a gessoed paper so I'm not even going to bother trying to smear them. They don't really work on here. If this was black gessoed paper, it would smear, but not on this kind of paper. And so this is the one I happen to be using. See, that metallic really shows up well, and I think all the rainbow shows up pretty nicely too. I would definitely say you could color on these with the, the matte ones, but not the, <clears throat> the neon ones. That's for Faber-Castell. All right, again on these, I'm not going to smear, but I'm just going to scribble on there so you get the basic idea of what you can see and what you can't. All right, ooh, pretty. Mmm, the metallic is showing up really pretty, oh my lord. Oh my gosh, talk about amazing. This is just like, woo, check that, check that, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All you metallic lovers out there are going to love this. I just love it. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. These colors are stunning on the black. And like, oops, I didn't really save room for the other sets. Excuse my hand moving across there, moving stuff out of the way. Uh, Let's see here. 
let me just take whoops <laughs> and they all go down and they all come tumbling down um i'm gonna try the white from this set and let's see how this white interacts oh yeah it looks like so in the main set right here is a white and here's a white and they look they look the same so uh as far as another color let's see how this shows up it shows up very silvery I'm gonna leave go up here in the middle space and just keep doing some more coloring. It's slightly different than the pink, I must say. Ooh, peach, peach, pretty peach. Okay, that's also different slightly than that. It's, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but these are not the same color. This has more of like a blue in there, and this is more of like a green in there. They're, they're so close, but this is a little more like blue. Um, and then the last we'll just do is this purple here. Um, okay. As far as the purple being the same, I'm going to say that they're pretty close too, but this is a little bit of a deeper purple and this is a little bit more of a pastel purple, but very similar. Just like this blue is like, is it's you'll see in real life at least, it's got a little more of like a blue Payne's gray kind of a color and these are definitely more just like silver, white, pearl type thing. So um, that's those colors. And then we'll switch over to... The tropical set which is matte so it should show up a little differently than the other ones and i'm going to just use this bottom row here to do that okay here we go mm -hmm. interesting yeah it's uh it colors it just shows up a bit more you know not as matte obviously okay Pretty, pretty, pretty. This yellow is pretty. The yellow is pretty light on here. I mean, I, I would probably use it on a black just because the effect isn't so nice. Looking at it compared to the metallic, it's like dang. Um, yes, this green actually is showing up really well. I don't know if you can see how much brighter that is than the other three, but uh, that's why I'm trying out all the colors so we can get the real perspective on all the colors in the line. The blue is showing up really nicely too. A little more bright, like the green, somewhere between the green and the other colors. Could be just because those colors are a little lighter, although the orange isn't per se, and it's not, sh oh yeah, and then the purple is showing up again, like not as nice, like more like the other colors, but they all show up on, on the black. They all do show up. Nothing is not seeable on here, so that is cool to know. Now that is the Recollections watercolors, and again, ooh, those watercolor ones are scented, but like a faint scent, not like it's going to bother you, but it's pretty. It makes me happy. Okay. All right, last round with the Marabou Art Crayons up next. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, they're not showing up so bright, per se, in my opinion. Uh, let's do these colors first. I mean, they're showing up, but uh, especially this one. It's kind of light cranberry. Dark cranberry, I should say. Whatever. It's not very showy, showy, shall we say. These kind of... I think the metallic showed the best on the black, like I anticipated they would but either way that pink actually looks pretty purpley and this purple interesting shows up better it's more like a chalky color that's definitely brighter okay let's go to this purple yeah and this purple is more on the dark side haha <laughs> it's the dark side just kidding so out of all these colors I'd say that's the one that shows up really well now we'll go to like a yellow 
Um, the yellow shows up fine. It's not like amazing looking. It kind of comes out kind of this blah, 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 color, kind of blah. I don't know. I'm not loving it, but it's it's yellow and it works. Okay, let's do this green. Yeah, I thought this might do that. So this green shows up a little better, kind of brighter, kind of like more like this purple, not quite as bright as the purple. That almost looks chalky, that purple. That's kind of interesting. But the green does show up pretty nicely. This one's also showing up a bit nicer. So a little brighter. It's interesting. Some of the colors, they all kind of change just depending. Oh, beautiful, this look. This not look turquoise, but that's okay. That's kind of like some kind of deep blue. I'm like kind of tempted to smear it. Guess you could do a little smearing if you do it like right away and fast kind of thing. Probably get a little smear factor up, up in there, but not very vibrant on that one. Okay, here's blue. Wow, this one's super not seeable. I don't know if that even the camera will even pick that up. And the last one here is this blue, which is brighter, and you can see it a little better. All right, that that are these. I mean, they show up. Mm, this color and this color don't as much, but the rest really do. All right, so on to the final summation of the situation with these kind of crayons on black. Um, again, you can make what you want of this. I'm just telling you what I see from what I did in my craft room, trying to be as objective as possible about it. But, you know, there's only so far that'll go. Um, so, okay, I mean, for me personally, since I love metallics, these, like, went out big time <clears throat> just because they were super, they were extra vibrant. Again, you kind of see they're extra vibrant, and they had the nice shimmer to it. So, so I really love these, and all of them from all three sets uh, worked well. Even the bottom row that's matte, um, still showed up really nicely. So that was cool. Um, as far as the Faber-Castell, so the neons totally didn't show up, which makes a lot of sense because they're not like pigment based, I don't think, as much as they're like, they're more translucent, I don't know, however you want to scientifically explain that. And then, but the base colors, the basic colors, this is a silver, it's hard to see there though, that's the one shimmery one. The rest are just matte, um, but they showed up very nicely on here. But they are only basic colors, so you're not getting a really wide spectrum of colors. It could be that in the other set, the other 12 piece that I talked to you about, that's a Joann's, or the metallic set, those probably show up well. The neons probably don't show up at all, um, but the, the other 12 piece set may give you a little bit more color choice, but uh, this gives you a very basic palette, basically. And then as far as the Marabou, um, honestly, they show up even nicer on the screen than they do in real life. Like, they didn't really do anything for me. This color, this, like, violet, purple, lilac, I should say, showed up the best. Um, but compared to, compared to, uh, say, the Faber-Castell or the other ones, they just kind of didn't, they left it feeling kind of short. Can you see them on black? Yes. Can you color with them on black? Yes. Will they be, uh, maybe giving you a lot of color and pop. No, they're just not going to. So, um, that was an interesting, that was interesting. I wasn't necessarily expecting those results, but that's why we do what we do here, right? In the lab. <laughs> so that was that. All right, so for this next part, I wanted to do a little bit of layering with them because, you know, the opacity and translucency and can you see over other colors? Does it make a difference between the brands? Do they all work pretty much the same? So I'm going to try that out right here. Um, and I'm just going to start off with a few of the uh, the Marabou's and see how they layer up. And this is Canson watercolor paper. I figured we'd, we'd try on a different substrate just to see kind of what it does. So lots of variables. I can't go through every variable, but I just want, you know, us to get a feel for what these babies can do. Okay, so I'm just kind of not trying to make anything pretty, but just putting it out on the paper. So as far as this, it's not gessoed, remember, it's watercolor, so it's got a lot of grooves in it and stuff, and you can tell it looks pretty rough. It doesn't have a very smooth blended quality to it, which makes sense. But like, you know, let's just see how red and yellow will go across that. 
And the red looks pretty intense. The yellow, the yellow you can see through. I'll bring it up closer. You can see through. It does have a, excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, I apologize. It does have a translucent, a more translucent effect to it. Um, so it does layer, but you're not going to completely cover it up. Um, and then the last one I'll try is like a dark blue. Get the spectrum here. Let's see. Yeah. So as far as the darker colors, the red and the dark blue, you really can't see much. Maybe it makes it a tad darker than like, it's, it's, let's say, let's put it this way. It's more pure color, vibrant on the white, but when you put it on the purple, like it does color over it. So the lighter the color, probably the more translucent it is, is what I'm taking from it. Now, if we did yellow, a beautiful yellow heart. <laughs> oh man okay so here's the yellow heart whoa I just totally messed it up it's all good and then we covered it over with like the other color I just want to see if I can even you know see through if it blends what is it doing it's really sloppy now it's um got this like crayon waxy build up kind of effect to it so that's interesting it kind of doesn't actually take away the color fully it sort of is merging the colors and I'm just messing it up with my finger just to see and as you can see you definitely get like an orange color out of that it's uh it's interesting it doesn't really it's I think because well I don't know I don't know the science all I'm saying is what I'm seeing I'm gonna stick with that it's safer right oh my gosh okay um yeah it, it blends. It kind of has, let's go from orange, I mean, sorry, red. It's like really an orangey red. It's like an interesting color. It's pretty. Okay. And then we're going to go to a yellow. Okay. So we've just got this red and yellow right next to each other. Now I'm going to take the yellow and go into the red and kind of just work it back and forth. Okay, now I do have some coloring, uh, some red on there, but it's fine. All I have to do is like take a quick swipe up with my finger and it comes off. It's like the creamiest face paint kind of a feel. It's great. Um, that's just with like touching it and it's still blended to make an orange. Oh boy, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. But I, what I am going to do is just work it in there with my finger. I'm going to work the whole thing. I don't know what that little dot is. Oh, interesting. Hey, that's interesting. Okay, I'll show you that in a second. I don't know if this works just on uh, watercolor paper or not, but okay, so it's definitely like made a blend. It's like a messy blend. Um, it's You can still see the lines almost of the original thing. You know, I didn't go over it with, like, if I add some more red, you know, it has it has room to like play with it and really get a, a blend going, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to add some more, whoops, with my dirty finger. That's not a very good idea. Okay, so here we go. There's some nice blending there. And then watch this, though. Because it does have this waxy consistency, I just saw as I was doing it that it makes... I mean, I could do this with my nail, but I don't really want to. Let's see. You can kind of... Yeah. You can you can like write through it. It's almost like the yellow is easier than the red, but either way you can you can see patterns and marks in it. So whoop, rolling off the desk. It's trying to roll away. Uh yeah. Interesting how it makes that mark. So it seems like you can get blended effects. You can, if you want to color over something, it wouldn't be perfectly opaque, but it would be pretty. It'd be fairly opaque. Um, except for the lighter colors where it's more translucent overlays and then you can you could do some blending It doesn't seem like it's that easy to color over a color unless you're like using it thick and then the other part of this I'm gonna take just Water I'm off camera here. Sorry. I just took water and I dipped a brush in it and I'm just curious to see like 
how it'll pick it up. Okay. Pretty. It's definitely picking it up. It's like, it's blending it and sort of, it's almost even taking it away. Let's just see here. If I add more water. Now I'm curious if I have a paper towel. Sorry. I'm going to try to mop it up. Look at that. You're getting almost, you're getting a lot of, the, I'm just, wet. I'm just cleaning off my brush here. You can, it's not taking it away, but it's certainly removing a good, oops, now my paper's peeling. I guess I pressed too hard, even for watercolor paper. So, okay. Not so pretty anymore, but I mean, technically there's room to like bring up color, take away a little color, mess around with it. And then I just wanted to do a little bit of a drip test here with a sprayer and see. Well, that certainly reacts. If I use it with my finger, it certainly blends. And you can see it drippies away. So that's actually really pretty. <laughs> Sorry, I'm off. Oh, my lighting is a little off. I just want you guys to be able to see it. So can you still see the original yellow? No, you can still see the original red probably because it's a really strong color. So even on watercolor, it doesn't like blend out fully, but it will like if you wanted to do just some kind of abstract art and have like it sprayed down or react with water, it would react with water. Okay, that's the Marabou Art Crayons. Right. Up next is the Ye Faber Castells, and they also have the neon, so I'll kind of do that as like a side thing. But I'm going to try to. They don't have purple in this set, so I'm going to just tr use the colors that I have. I can't do the out, you know, try to match them almost, but I'm missing the purple. So I'm going to just do a blend here quick. Um, I'm going to go in here. I bet it would, it's going to blend 10 times better on gesso paper also, just so you know, like on here it's giving it a hard time, but these would, should all blend fairly nicely. Whoops, I just did orange. Gosh, golly deeper. That's what I get for talking. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, huh, let's see. <laughs> Let me use the take it off with water technique, because otherwise you can't really tell if it got a good, if the, if it, you know, if it turned orange because I colored it orange or, or, okay, or because I blended yellow and, and red together better. I apologize for my situation here, my inaccuracy. Okay, and I'm just gonna, whatever, I'm just gonna make the best of it. Okay, so as far as, what? All right, I'm just blending with my finger. This actually blends rather nicely. Um, I'm liking it so far, and then, you know, yellow kind of gets lost in the translation here. Let's put a little more in on the side in the middle. And yeah, I mean, that blended, it's like a subtle orange in the middle. I don't know if the camera will pick that up again or not, but it's, uh, it definitely made a nice orange. I felt like it was easier to blend than the Marabou. Maybe I'm just dreaming, I don't know, but it's, it's in the paper better. And it's the same side of the watercolor paper, so it's not changed that way, but it just seemed to go on nicely. Um, and it did bring up the color, but I'll just show you guys in a little swatch over here e either way. I'm just going to blend that in. We'll see with green what you could pick up. Um, on the watercolor paper, I still see the marks, even when I smudge it, like with this particular thing. It's, they're sort of apparent still. And if I use water... brings it up like a watercolor and you can remove you basically remove it all except for like that initial smear you see like a ghosting of the smear so there's that and then as far as layering I guess uh, hmm, I guess hmm, I'll use I, I'll just use orange whatever I don't know we'll use we'll go with orange on this one okay I'm just gonna do it, blend it a little so we can get like more of a background with it. Okay. Um, all right, now let's see what you can see with red on top. The red seems to cover it up really nicely. I'll just color some red off. Yeah, it doesn't seem to change colors even when it goes off the orange. And then now yellow, let's see what yellow does. Yellow is also um, totally affected by the orange. I would say it's covering. You can see yellow on orange, but it's not. It's more translucent. 
And then we'll do a blue. Yeah, the blue pretty much covers it up. So that's that's for that. You see, that's beautiful. And then as far as drippage, what I'll just do is I'm going to color over that spot again. And I'm going to kind of just have it go this way. Because rub it in because I want to do some neon on the corner and then drip it's definitely it definitely drips it definitely reacts with the water and has a drippy effect so you could do the same thing like you could with the marabou I just want to quick wipe that off okay and now we're gonna super quick do the neons because that's kind of ex like fun I don't know um all right you know, I'm going to just do, I'm going to write with like a micron pen. I'm just going to write hello in really not great handwriting. So we can see what it looks like over something and not just on its own. Highlight this thing. Mm -hmm. oh, see on the watercolor paper? It's, uh, it's got this totally, mm, what's the word? Grainy look instead of it being smooth. I mean, they're definitely highlighted colors. They're definitely doing a highlight thing here. I'm just gonna trace over the, this. Ooh, that's really highlighted. Look at that. Can you see that brightness? Ooh, beautiful. It's like so bright. And then I'm gonna smear that too. And then I am gonna just to be crazy, go over this with the blue highlighter just to see about if you can. So. It colors over it kind of neat. Um, I'm gonna do some of the blue color. It's not bright the blue. It's more looks like just like a very I don't know bright sky blue kind of going on. I'm gonna blend that out a little. It gets much paler when you blend them on here, but whatever. Um, seems like there's some ability to do blending with these colors even on even on here even on this like super absorbent paper. And um, the blue and the green kind of absorbed. And then let's just go over with some pink. Okay, so you can you can layer with the you can layer with the the highlights. Um, you just the whole thing you're working with is translucent, pretty much. See, so like again, I colored it all, but you can still see the hello super clearly. So that's kind of what these babies bring to the table. Some bright, vibrant fun, but not opac opacity. Forget about that. Forget about it. Covering anything up. It ain't gonna do that. So that was the Faber Castell. Right, here we are with our final contestant, the Recollections watercolors. Um, stick crayons, crayons, watercolor crayons, yes. Um, I have the metallics and then we'll also look at the, just the regular, like, opaque, uh, non-shimmery colors just to see if there's, you know, what's the deal with that. Um, I will, nope, let me do this. I'm gonna do first purple. Okay, get a good purple base going. And again, I'm going to just blend that out. I'm going to grab my red. Oh, interesting. Okay, the red is not so opaque on here. Um, I don't know if you can see, it darkens it up considerably on the purple. So that's interesting. Uh, yellow is for sure not going to color. The red doesn't even cover. But then again, I'm making assumptions, naughty me. Well, this set must be a little backwards somehow because it's totally not doing what I expected to do. The yellow, it's pretty vivid. It's a pretty vivid color and it's it seems a lot brighter than the, than the red. I don't know. It's covering really nicely. You see that shine? It covers it like clearly. And then the blue will do some blue. See what that does. And so really it comes down to trying out all the colors with each other on your own as well. I'm just giving a little sampling of the possibilities. And this blue is gorgeous. Maybe I didn't do the red well. Did I not like did I not get the right piece part of the red? Like what's going on here? No, the red is just not as shimmery as the blue and the yellow. How super weird. Huh. The blue covers nicely. I mean the red is obviously, you can see it over the purple without a question. It's just not as opaque as the other two for some reason on the purple. So there's that. Um, as far as using a color to kind of roll off, 
let me just go like this let me blend 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 <laughs> okay there you go there's your little dot of green sorry okay it's really pretty oops I got some color and then it's dripping so they all have this you know make it into a watercolor and it'll drip effect kind of thing um, and I'm let's see if I wipe it if I wipe it it really it has a faint also the faint ghosting effect they're all pretty much the same in that way as far as I've from what I've witnessed so far uh, let's take some red to blend with the yellow and see how that goes okay whoops I totally just contaminated that a bit but we'll go with it till the end Ooh, it's so pretty so pretty this is without me really doing much at all in terms of blending but now I'm gonna really stick my finger there you know what I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in with yellow and go toward the red instead of the other way around okay um nice uh hmm. I almost like the blending on here better than I did for the other ones but that's again just my opinion it blended really nicely from what I feel and see over here um and again, everybody may get different results, and on different papers, it's going to do different things. But that's just a quick little recap there. Okay. Um, and what else? Let us take some of the regular ones now and just see if there's, you know, what's what. Okay. Nice swatch of pink. Ooh, the tropical smell good. They're the one pack that's scented. <laughs> It smells good up in here in my craft room. Okay. Well, the green shows over it. It does show. They seem to be layering nicely. I'm just gonna like squiggle rise this thing. I feel like the pink and the purple are kind of similar, so they kind of blend in. And then I've got some yellow. The yellow, kind of interesting. Hmm, let's see. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it almost smears together with the other colors and kind of is darkened when it goes over the other colors. So you're not going to get like as vibrant a color now. But if you did yellow, and then a color, let's see what it does. Well, the color works just fine on top of there. Now, if I did it all blue on one side, I'm curious if you'd get like a mixy mixy. Yeah, you do. You get a green. So there is a, there's like definitely a mixing capacity here happening up in here. And then I think the only other color I just forgot was like this. Well, making my little hat. Right. A really creepy smiley distorted smiley face hey we all need one of those right okay I don't know I don't know what I was doing there but the orange does go over the other colors though and if you probably put this color over you will get I mean I'm not gonna say it muddied but it's not such a pretty color so I assume you do have like a mixing capability with these kind of these kind of medium this kind of medium Whew. So, um, there is that. And I will come back with one last little tip trick for using this kind of thing to get more bang for your buck with your crayons. So, hang on a sec, and I'll be right there. Okay, I fibbed a little there. I really did. I did. But I thought of more things. What can, what can I do? I just... Uh, I can't leave it. I want you guys to know what you're getting and what the difference is in all aspects that I could think of. Ah! Uh, crafty dilemma. Okay, so basically the deal is I was like, oh, wait a second. The Faber Castell has a black and the Recollections has a white. I have to try them out. And then Marabou does have white and black, but I don't 
own them so I can't review them but I but I'm just gonna use the color as the marabou and just see how they all interact I'm assuming they'll all do just fine with each other um, and so I'm gonna use this as my base color this is some gessoed quick quickly white gessoed paper um, hopefully I'll get a nice smoothness to it I guess what I'll do is make a long strip of the purple and then blend with my finger Okay, that blends nicely. All right. And again, if you see streaks in the paper, it's because I use gesso and with like a very archaic brush. So um, I'm going to take white on one end. Stop rolling everywhere, people! And I'm just going to see, okay, this is, this is blended, this is with white blended in. So this is kind of cool because you can totally get... From what I'm seeing, you can totally get like a lighter, a lighter purple, not so much lighter, but hey, what if we keep putting more white in, you know, on the side? I feel like at some point you could like make it super light. You, especially if you blend out like this, you go out, you know, it gets, it can get a lot lighter. So you kind of have like a variation of that color. So that's nice. And let's see with the black. This is probably obviously a much stronger reaction. But let me just quick, here it is, and then let me blend it out. Like, I'm curious if the black is just going to totally overtake the purple or if it's going to... Now here it is with just like black right on top in like a nice thick layer. It pretty much takes away the purple, but I'm curious if I, eh, sorry, I'm getting dirty. If I just do like, say a stripe of it in the middle and then try to blend that out, if it's not gonna be as extreme, if I can get some kind of, you know, darker purple. See that to me does look like a darker purple. It looks like a dirty purple really. Hmm interesting i feel like i get I, I it was much easier to blend out the purple to a lighter color to tr then to try to get a black and purple but just for the sake of being sure if you can be sure about anything in life which you know <laughs> uh i will try it out here separately on a little patch and i'm just going to add a little black in the center not even a lot like a little bit just see just to see <laughs> okay alrighty and then I'm gonna put some purple down here to compare it to hello Gabby okay using another finger well that looks lighter let me see this doesn't look as intense okay okay yeah that definitely made a deeper shade, like without a question. That's a deeper shade than say the original purple that I had. So I guess the answer with the black is only add a teeny drop of black to get a different color, unless you're trying to obscure the color you're drawing over it. And in that case, use as much black as you want. With the white, it seemed to just the more white, the more blended out you could get. And um, that was really nice. So. That's kind of the result of blending over here with the light and dark and shades and all that jazz. So basically I had this strip that I just sewed and I was like, hey, I need to do the tr the tip. I want to do the tip for you guys on this paper instead of making more paper to be, you know, frugal. So I put some water on it to see what would come off. And like a lot of it is coming off, as you can tell. Let's see if the black does it also. I'm just really putting like, I'm being generous with like water but uh really and just rubbing it and scrubbing it rub a dub dubbing it <laughs> oh see that's pretty nice that's the other benefit i guess of using a gessoed paper is like if you make an oopsie there's there is going back on this it's not as final i mean it's not 100 percent perfect by any means but it takes care of a lot of it so you can get more out and i'm not really being you know super super strict about it if you will i'm just sort of doing it kind of carefreely that's a word 
carefree -y 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 -y. <laughs> and wiping 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 okay beautiful all right give me a sec with my heat gun so we're back to like um a pretty light piece of paper now why did i do that why did i show you good question i'm trying to remember because i want to show you my trick hey hey <laughs> okay tim holtz ink blending sponge or any kind of foam sponge thereof and putting a new one on and taking a color let's take another color let's take this pretty turquoise from the marabou and yes you got it this is what i'm doing ah everybody scream just kidding don't Okay, now I'm going to do this dry. I just put some on. It doesn't look like much. I'm going to do this dry, and then I'm going to do this wet, and then we'll see the difference. All right. Hey, pretty nice if I do say so myself. You can get, like, a really great blend. So how is that for awesomenessity? Awesomenessnessness. Um, no. Can I make this wet? And then blend it. I think I'm going to get even like a crazy, more vibrant color from it. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe I made it too wet. See, now it's already like bubbly and bringing it up. Maybe that wasn't an answer. Interesting. Maybe I need to wipe it off a little. Hmm. But then like you're losing a lot of your product. Yeah, it's totally wiping it off. Okay. Part of that that uh, part of that tip is don't make it wet. It doesn't even help. You can do it with dry so with i should say a dry foam eh. um okay as far as like another color i'll just take one from the recollections i'm going to take orange and what i'm going to do is take the new blending foam thing good thing i've got a lot of these to go around and 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 oh right do it through a stencil that was the other little cuteness that i want to show you all right, here's my stencil. Sorry for that momentary hiccup. I'm going to do it off and on the, you know, color. Just see what you can see. I'm going to take it again without water. Okay, and I'm just going to do some mark making on here. And, you know, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just doing it kind of with, like, a drop of pressure, but really light. I don't know if that will work or if you'll see it or what, but we're going to go for it. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like super strong. I probably could be a little bit more adventurous with it. I'm going to just put more on. This works nicely when you smear it just a tad. Now I'm just going to be a stinker and I'm just like mist over it. So it's like really just like barely, you know. I think that helps, oh yeah, that helps the color come to life. So again, you know, play with, oh, well, of course I'm silly and I did orange over blue. That's like not a pretty combination, but whatever. The fact of the matter is you could totally use these through stencils. So woohoo, good news. And you can use them with a blending sponge um, tool like it would, like you would do with any kind of ink pad. Um, so how cool you can use this like in that way uh, that's pretty handy um, I said I wasn't going to show you all the ways you can use these things but I kind of am getting caught up in this like awesomeness of the versatility of these products so that's just a lot of fun okay um, and the one thing the one and you don't have to worry this would always come off with water so like it's, it's not one of those products you have to run and like wipe your stencil off right away otherwise they're going to stain it forever and ever I hope you guys enjoyed I have all these lovely little reminders now of that I'm going to keep and save for when I want to use these babies and just get crafty and get playing. And I hope this was enlightening and um, enjoyable and you kind of felt like you got a better understanding of these craft supplies. I know I did. I've been meaning to do this review for a while now. And compare them because I was like, dude, you have a whole bunch of these. Are they even the same? Are they different? Like, you bought a lot. So, <laughs> you know, I feel like, especially when us crafters have the the 
by one of every color syndrome, it's good to know if they do the same thing or not, if they can interact with each other, if it's worth spending the money on X brand versus Y brand, and, you know, and if we can go with, you know, different types of things, what the neon does versus the metallic versus the matte, blah, 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 all the good stuff. So, again, hope this gave a little insight, and have a crafty day. If you liked what you saw here today, please like and subscribe and feel free to go check me out on Facebook and Instagram at Inaley Artsy.